Without a doubt, one of my favorite things to do is to collect vintage bass tackle. Second only perhaps to actually catching fish with that tackle. Today on Retro Bassin, we are going to try a new little segment on the channel called Collect to Catch. In my uh, online and flea market travels, I definitely come across some very unique discontinued bass fishing lures. And whenever possible, we'd like to do a retro bass and a deep dive into the history of those baits. Unfortunately, not every bait lends itself to that. And sometimes I just can't find a ton of information on a particular lure in question. But just because I cannot give an in-depth history lesson on a particular lure, doesn't mean it's not deserving of a retro bassin episode. And that is where the new Collect to Catch series comes in. Today's uh, lore we're going to be talking about is this unique bait from Eddie Pope, and it is called the Fishback. We're going to be talking about a recent purchase of this lure that I made, and we're also going to take it out on Lake Travis to see if it can still catch fish today. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Well, <laughs> welcome to Retro Bassin. By the way, if this is your first time here and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past, well, stick around, consider subscribing, and please be sure to drop a comment, hit that bell notification, and also give the video a thumbs up if you like it. All of those things definitely help us beat that YouTube algorithm. So today's episode, I'm going to talk about a very unique lure that I recently came across called Eddie Pope's Fishback. But before we get into that, I will tell you exactly how this lure even got on my radar in the first place. Uh, not too long ago, I got a very cool mail call from Bass and Bud Randall Pink Floyd, and in a box full of old school gold was one of these, a lure that I had never seen before. Uh, in fact, I don't even know if I knew the name of it in the video, but a few subscribers told me that this was a unique discontinued crankbait called the Fishback. This is a pretty cool chrome gold Fishback, and it is in a rattling model. Well, that sent me off on a, a little bit of a old school rabbit hole, trying to find everything I could find about this bait. Unfortunately, there was not a ton of history to uncover specifically on the fishback. I did find a pretty cool lot of new in the package lures on eBay and decided to pick up some of those and you will see a pretty good selection right here that we'll go through. I also did a little bit of uh, history on Eddie Pope and I did find out that he is a California lure builder who's probably most well known for this bait the hot shot. It's widely considered one of the best salmon trolling plugs out there and even though I've never actually fished a hot shot I've certainly heard of it and I happen to have one little teeny hot shot in my collection. Here is a fish bag that I pulled out of the package. This was uh, new in the package and I opened this thing up to take a fishing today. I would say first impressions of this bait. It looks almost like a hybrid between a flatfish or lazy ike and a normal crankbait. It's got a flat sort of scooped out bill built into the bait, no eyes of course, and it's got sort of that flatfish banana shape. It is a little bit more wide bodied than a flatfish and I do have a flatfish here. I will show you a quick side by side comparison of the bait. So there is the fish back and there is the flat fish. So definitely some similarities as far as the overall shape and I'm pretty sure the action of the bait, but you can see the flat fish is, well, a lot more flat. These baits uh, that I did pick up are also non-rattling. You can see there that is silent as a mouse. 
and it came in a number of pretty cool and very unique colors. All right, so let's go through and look at a couple of the new in the package Eddie Pope's Fishback. First one, it says the color is white metallic, approximately three eighths of an ounce. Uh, I will show you the package and then I'll read some of the verbiage on it. That is a pretty cool color. It's a white with a little red chin, some silver flake, and a nice black strip down the back. What does it say about Eddie Pope's fishback? Uh, well, it is tested and proven for all game fish. Important to use uh, with a snap or a split ring. Uh, otherwise, the lure action will be affected. Eddie Pope and Company in Valencia, California. Very nice. So that's the first one. Uh, second one looks like we've got the fish back in a black scale pattern with a silver stripe down the back. That's pretty cool. Ooh, I like this one. Green scale. Oh, almost a sort of a macro pattern, huh? Pretty cool. Gold plate. Yeah, sort of a muted gold. That's not quite as chromed out as the one that Randall Pink Floyd sent us. But that's a pretty cool color. Oh, here's a good one. A nice old school frog pattern. And notice all these have some sort of racing stripe down the back of them. Usually black, but sometimes in a different color. And last but not least, the one that I'm pretty excited to fish with, Yellow Metallic. That is a cool, almost clown color. It's got yellow, a little bit of a red chin, some silver metallic, and black stripe down the back. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get the studio cleaned up. I'm gonna get a few fish bags tied on my old school combos, and we are gonna be heading to Lake Travis to see if this bait can still catch today. There's definitely some life back here. We'll see if old Eddie Pope's fish back can get one. <laughs> definitely one of the weirdest crankbaits that I've thrown in a minute. It almost has a flavor of like a flatfish or a lazy ike, but it's also a little bit more, I want to say wide bodied than that. So it definitely fishes a little bit sort of like a hybrid between a regular crankbait and one of those lazy Ike types. But definitely a lazy Ike was the inspiration for this dude. It actually runs deeper than I thought it would. It is a subtle little crankbait. I'm having a hard time throwing it too, too far, even with this reel sort of loosened up. There's something busting over there. But even though I can't cast it like a country mile, it is getting down pretty deep for such a light little, ooh, bait. Come on, buddy. <laughs> what a wild looking lure. Come on, Eddie Pope. Oh, there's some fish busting. There's a ton of activity. Just ahead and oh, got that smell. Yep, yep, yep. Somebody's eating bait fish in this vicinity. <laughs> it's gonna happen, boys. And hey, girls. Maybe not. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, I'm a mess. I'm a mess. It's funny, but on this channel, there are many lures that you guys never see. I can't tell you how many times I purchase some old school piece of gold, and it turns out to be a piece of fool's gold. It's amazing how many lures literally just cannot even be fished back to the boat. Whoa, in an effective manner at all. That was a fish. <laughs> but this little bait, I kind of like it. I like it more if it caught a fish. <laughs> Ooh, something, something, something. I think there's some white bass up in here. Some white bass. What is that? Did you guys see that?
Oh, got one. Oh, man. Oh, son. <laughs> oh, that is a nice big old white bass. On the Eddie Pope's fish back. I'm going to net him just because I don't want to lose him. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, wow. That was really cool. We were fishing this little bank here, and I had a couple of splashes behind me that I just could not ignore. So I flipped the camera around, cast it, actually, I'm sitting in about eight feet of water, cast it out to about 20, and, ooh, nice little white bass. So there we go, that is a pretty, pretty little white bass. Man, that is a ferocious little freshwater predator. I have caught plenty of white perch in my day. I've caught plenty of striped bass but I've never caught this hybrid species, the white bass. It definitely fights a lot more like a striper than a white perch. Awesome, let's let this guy go. We have found what appears to be a nice little school of white bass actually out here in deeper water than I've been fishing. So I'm gonna scoot the old bass tracker out a little bit deeper and hopefully get another one or two on the old Eddie Pope's fish back. Oh man, that was really cool. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> oh, that might have just been the worst hook set in retro bass in history. Holy smokes. <laughs> These white bass hit like a ton of bricks and I was not ready for that. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh man. I have to delete that footage for sure. <clears throat> oh, wow. Oh, that's a monster. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is a monster white bass. Oh, giant. Come on, buddy. Oh, holy mackerel. I had no idea these things were this big. Wow. That is a monster white bass. And now I know why they were hitting so hard. Oh my goodness. Wow, well, there is the white bass, and there is the lure that caught them, the Eddie Pope's fishback crankbait. Wow, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous looking white bass. Oh man, that thing is an absolute tank. Awesome. Woo. Well, my plan is to just keep working on down this bank and hopefully get another white bass or two. Oh my goodness. That thing was awesome. Awesome. What a fun fish to catch. Oh, and they're busting all over the place. Oh my gosh. Oh. What is that? I think I snagged something. I mean, I know I snagged something. But I think it's moving. I only have two fish bags with me today, so I don't want to lose one. Not yet. <laughs> so I need to get my fish back back. And I did. Somehow. Wow. All right, I'm going to take that as a sign to retie. I have definitely been beating this thing on the bushes a little bit. And as I said, I've only got two of these fish backs with me and only one in this color, which I kind of digging so far. So while I'm retying, I do want to show you guys a little trick that I just kind of thought of today. Without a doubt, my favorite knot is the improved clinch knot. It's the knot that I've tied since, oh God, there's a giant gar. It's like a three footer. It's basically the knot that I've been tying since I was a kid. It's really the only knot that I ever fish with. But as you get older and your vision on nearsighted things gets a little bad, 
it is actually hard for me to tie. So what I started doing today is before I make the loop, I actually put a finger right in there like that. And then I do my five twists around the main line. Normally at this point, I am struggling on where to put that line. But since I've got a nice big loop here, boom, it goes right on through. And back in action. So yeah, it's a good little hack. I've never actually heard that before. I was just kind of struggling today. I uh, forgot my readers and I'm like, how do I retie? And that's what I came up with. So if you are uh, fishing at old school because you're old school, uh, try that one. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's another white bass. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh, we are on it, son. Oh, man. All right, let's get him in. Oh, man. Is that a, <laughs> there's bugs on the camera. <laughs> I'm a mess today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Woo. Huh? But another tank of a white bass on the old fish back. Man. And you guys got to see how this thing goes hooked. <laughs> I don't think this one is legal, me and Gene, but that's all right. We, uh, we hooked the white bass um, in its fish back. <laughs> oh boy. That's all right though. Another gorgeous, gorgeous looking little white bass. Wow. <sighs> Had a feeling it's gonna be a fun day. There's a little lake east of town, headed that way, hammered down. The water calls on me from time to time. The phone turned off, music cranked, put the boat in the lake. Start her up, I know I'll be alright. Here's to ripping lips, not breaking tips or falling out of the boat. Dragging line and doing fine. Sunshine time, tackle box and some fishing twine. Here's to ripping lips, not breaking tips or falling out of the boat. Here's to ripping lips, not breaking tips or falling out of the boat. Well, that was a pretty fun trip on Lake Travis this morning. It's always cool to catch a fish on a lure that you've never caught a fish on. Um, honestly, a lure that you've never actually thrown, but it's even cooler to catch a new species on a new lure. I feel like that's almost like a retro bass in Grand Slam. Maybe if I was also on a new body of water. Either way, this was a really cool crankbait to fish with. I would say that overall, first impressions of it, it fished pretty similar to what I thought. Just looking at the position of the eye here, it looked like it wasn't gonna be a super deep diving crankbait. It did dive a little bit deeper than I thought, but it's definitely one of those four to five foot deals. Not necessarily a two to three footer, actually as I was kind of suspecting, uh, but it is not a deep diving crankbait. I do feel like that limited our application a little bit, and usually when I'm chunking and winding crankbaits, I like to have a variety of different depths sort of to cover the contours. So that was a little bit of a limiting factor today. This thing does have a very nice wiggle. It is a silent bait, uh, with the exception of the one that Randall Pink Floyd sent. And uh, yeah, aside from that, I think this thing is definitely a fish catcher. I could imagine that this thing would also be good for trolling. It doesn't have such a crazy wiggle, like a wiggle ward or something like that that would perhaps roll over while you're trolling. So I think you could probably troll this thing pretty well. And if this thing can catch a white bass, I'm pretty sure that it can catch most species of freshwater fish. I did mention that I picked up a few of these on eBay and we're gonna try something a little bit new this episode of Retro Bass and N. 
maybe in future episodes if you guys are into it. I've gone ahead and listed five different colors of the Eddie Pope Fishback on eBay, as well as a Retro Bass and Decal for $1 plus shipping. I will drop the link to that listing down below, but definitely head on over to the eBay if you want to check it out and get a little piece of Retro Bass in history. Also, drop a comment down below. Let me know what old school lure from your past you'd like to see featured on Retro Bassin. If you're looking for more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place next weekend. And until then, keep the carpet side up. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.